Hey there, welcome to my channel. My name is Crystal and this is Books Forever After where I sit on the floor and we talk about everything and all things books. Alright, so to get started today, as you can tell by the title of this video, we are going to be talking about historical romances. I, I have loved historical romance authors. I have loved before I joined booktube. So I have a list here. I have about eight list here so we should get uh should get started right okay let's go <laughs> all right so my first one which i think um i i i really i should have brought my tablet but i can't, does not have very many reviews or ratings um on goodreads and i think it's highly underrated and i think the reason is because uh, i'm not sure if the author is well known obviously and i'm not uh, I think she also mainly had done a lot of romances back in the 2000s, um, the 2000s, 2010s um, era. And she did a lot of rom-com and she does have a few historical romances and those are, um, majority of those are western romances. So I don't know how I found this yes. one for years and I think I've read it probably six to eight times as a reread um, and I've loved it. And this is the standard that I hold all kind of like Western historical romances to. And that book is True Love by Millie Criswell. And what I love about this book, um, I don't know if it's just the feeling that I get. I just love the, char the, the female character as well. So I connect with her a little bit. Um, I like her uh, banter and, you know, humor. Her... Um, so this follows Emily Jean Bartlett. Um, she's an author of Dime Novels, so that's really cool. And this is set in the um, late 1800s, so late, uh, I want to say 1989 or 1990, uh, 1990, 1890. <laughs> and this book um, that Millie, um, this author wrote this book, this was uh, in, published in 1999. So yeah, it's definitely in that, that, that era. As I mentioned before, and this is set in, um, and this is set in New York. She meets uh, Jess Murdoch, and he is a legend of the West. So he is a single dad, cowboy, ranch owner, and he was a sharpshooter in the Buffalo um, Bills Wild West show. Um, so same one, the kind of same show where Annie Oakley um, did that one there. So I love that part. Um, this is just, I don't know, there's a really cool, like, there's a stage robbery, there's, you know, there's a really, there's, he's a single dad, so he has, like, an eight-year-old son, and just the connection that she has with them, um, she kind of goes off and, um, she's a, an author of dyed novels, and so she likes to base her dyed novels, you know, back in there on truth, so she travels to Montana, which is why it says True Love Montana, because the name of the town is True Love. And he owns, um, and Jess owns a ranch outside of the town. Um, I think it's like a day's ride or like a, quite an hour uh, long drive, you know, wagon ride to his ranch. And she shows up in that town and says that, you know, Jess is expecting this. So there's, the town is kind of protective of him because um, a lot of, I can't, and this has been a while since I read this book. It's been since my little, my reading hiatus the past, you know, seven years. And I can't remember the exactly, but like she shows up in this town and, you know, says that she's there. Um, and she kind of, you know, says in white lie, so to speak. And she shows up there to um, his doorstep to make a deal to, she wants to write, I want to say wants to write his story, you know, write a die novel, and he's not willing to, and, but he, they do strike a deal that she has to work like an actual ranch hand, um, which is really cool, and I think he also, and the reason why he also doesn't want to tell her because of there is some, um, some past traumatic history there, he doesn't want to share. So it's definitely a grumpy at sunshine trope as well, and I don't know, I just love it. So 
um, the sweet, I forget her name, but the cook lady there, she just says so sweet. It's like a found family feeling. I think that's why I love. It's just very heartwarming and comforting. And I highly recommend anyone to try, um, everyone to try and read this one um, and check it out. Um, it's, it's one of my all-time favorites. Next, I want to discuss is Remembrance by Jude Devereaux. Um, I think... I know this has probably been on with the community probably in years past, but I'm not exactly sure. But um, this one I love, and there are some good points as to why people may not like this one as much. Um, it definitely is a little rushed at the end. Um, if it's like the author kind of like, um, this is going forever, and I just kind of want to wrap it up. So you can kind of feel that in the author's writing at the end. Um, but this is a kind of like a time travel, but not in a time travel that you think. It's um, a past lives um, kind of time travel. Um, she, the main character, is an author. She's a romance author, which is great. <laughs> so a romance author, and she's always, um, I thought it was like really interesting because she's always talking about historical accuracies, about how I think in this one she was talking about, um, the descriptions where people don't do the research and they're like oh they're doing something in a privy you know the restroom I would just call you know considered a restroom in their in their closet and thinking they're doing all these things like yeah that's not what you're doing <laughs> but anyway um this is um so yeah she's a romance author and she gets hypnotized um with you know her friends to to go to her past life and so the reason why she gets hypnotized is she has um just unlucky in love or she's just not really connected I think she's engaged at the beginning of this um and she actually becomes obsessed um when she's reading during all this like she didn't even care that you know her fiance broke up with her so she is just obsessed with this male character so basically she's obsessed with the book boyfriend and just wishing he was real and she just had this like he feels real to her and I thought that was just pretty awesome that like uh, um, to see an author, a story about an author falling in love with her character and she actually, you know, goes to past lives and discovers why she was so obsessed with, um, with her made up male, you know, book boyfriend kind of a thing. And so she finds out that she has a curse. There was like some sort of a curse that was placed. So she goes back in time to like England, one of her past lives. And then just like a, there's like a thing of inception there, so they go back even further, which is really cool. So, um, so yeah, I definitely, I definitely like this one. I love it a lot. I read this one several times as well. I actually, when I first started um, reading again during the pandemic, I think I reread this in 2020 and all that thing. So, all the stress of the pandemic and everything like that. So I just needed a comfort read, and I just like I. I even found this at a book sale um, months later or so, I can't remember when, um, because I, after years of reading, this is one of those books I got away that you're like, I remember this book. I know it's this author. I knew it was this, and I, like, I was searching and searching, like, okay, this is it. Um, so it was one of those instances when you're like, okay, I remember I read this book years ago, and for the life of me, I can't remember what it was called and what the book was. So. Um, definitely love it. I even remembered like the mirror and the blue cover and everything. So this was one that was happily re reunited um, to reread again. So, all right. So the next one I don't have a physical copy of. Um, I do. It is a it basically Eloisa Eloise Louisa James. I think I'm pronouncing her first name right. Um, this one I read several. I can't remember. All the ones that I've read um, before during my you know before my hiatus of reading but there is one particular one that I remember I think this is the one um, it was one where the heroine is a widow and she kind of um, strikes up to try to with a bargain with a male character I forget his name but the book is called um, A Duchess by Night I think it is this one I will pop in the picture here um, if it's not, I'm sorry, but the, I'll have to reread. I'm, I'm going to have to find this one and reread. It, it is unfortunately the one I have not been able to find at any library book sales. But 
there is one particular scene in this book that is as the garden and they have some like steamy fun times on this bench or whatever so for some reason that book really stuck out to me even years later and that scene and their connection and the, the tension back and forth of their clandestine meetings and things like that so um so it was really interesting so she's a you know widow widower or widow a duchess and a duchess and you know she discovers she wants to have some freedom and then she meets this guy so i can't remember his name and i forget, totally forgot it but that is the one that i have brought up i have several uh, novels of hers of eloisa james that i want to get started back into um, and a lot of these will probably be rereads, but because it's been so long, I'm going to be, like, re-experiencing them again. So, which is basically every single, most of the OG authors as well. Alright, and then this one comes as no surprise. I think it's one of the most, everyone's, I think, top one favorite. And that is Lisa Kleypas, Again, The Magic. Um, so, yeah. This is also one of those that's very similar to to Remembrance by Jude Devereaux, where I was trying to remember when I was re coming back into reading for historical romances that I was like, okay, I remember this one by Lisa Claypist. I'm like, I know I remember it's a second chance romance and I loved it. And um, I remember things about the heroine and the things that happened in the book. And so, you know, did a little search and this was another one that was we were reunited. Um, so. I'm so excited <laughs> to be reunited back to it. So, um, yeah, it's definitely one of my um, all-time favorites. Um, still, um, this is like number zero. It's kind of like the prequel to the Wallflower series. Um, you don't need to read um, this before the Wallflower series at all. Um, it's just um, it's kind of like the one of the heroes in the Wallflower series. It's um, she. This is her. This is his sister in that. Um, so this follows um, McKenna and Aline. And this is like the, I think it's kind of standard, the second chance romance. Um, she breaks up with him in the beginning of this book. Um, he is a stable boy. She's a, I know, I think it's an Earl's daughter. And, you know, their, their love is forbidden and things like that. And so her father finds out about their love or whatever and he threatens that he will basically ruin McKenna um if she doesn't you know tell him to leave and break up with him and things like that so she does makes him think that she never really cared about him and then you know he goes off to America and becomes a self-made man um and he comes back um years later to as invited by her brother who is kind of not your typical Earl. He actually loves, um, it's really one of those enlightened um, wars at the time on, on in industry and things like that and business and people making a name for themselves and, and that and, and so forth. So he comes back into with a house party. So it's another like forced proximity kind of situation. And so things kind of ensue from there. So there's a lot of uh, bitterness on McKenna's side. And he kind of makes her, he wants to ex exact his revenge against Aline. So yes, definitely. And you know, things ensue from there. So there was a very interesting tree scene. So that was very interesting as well. So I highly, highly recommend. Um, if you have not read this, where have you been living? Or have you been living under a rock? So definitely need to read this if you haven't. All right, and then this comes as no surprise as well. Um, when <laughs> when this came out for Netflix, I was just so ecstatic, and I'm like, this is amazing. So, of course, as we all know, what I'm alluding to is the Bridgerton series by Julia Quinn. So I, <laughs> I had picked this up, oh gosh, back in 2010 when I was in, in high school because <laughs> I had, because... Um, Back in high school and college, I always would check out books, and these were the series that I was checking out multiple times to reread. So when I was in college, when I could afford to, I bought the whole entire series on paperback, and I was like, I want to read, and these ones are the other ones where I found them again. We were reunited to reread. So my um, 
I think I first read actually an offer from the gentleman which is the third book in the series and follows um Benning Benedict that's the same and Sophia so it's like the Cinderella um inspired uh story of this and this is actually going to be probably hopefully um happening in season four so we'll see um a Bridgerton but again so the the Bridgerton series is I think great and it's on its own did I have some beef with some of the things they changed especially in season two yes but it is what it is and there it's still a good show in and of itself and I will still love the books on their own and um and love them as well and kind of see them as separate as well but so I'm just trying to manage my expectations for season three which is following Penelope and Colin so that is also one of my um favorites as well so um but however my top three has to be um, an offer from a gentleman that was the first one I read out of the series and I was like wait this is not the first one so again I had to like read them from beginning to all the way to the end <laughs> Um, so yeah, that's, that's just my, you know, character flaw that I have there. And then The Viscount Who Loved Me I Loved, which is, was, season two was based off of, and uh, I just loved it. They were just, like, your typical kind of, like, enemies to lovers. And I know there's some controversy in this one where they did not like the fact that what he did to her in his office, um, being, like, mean kind of a thing, like, by stepping on her, like, with her hand in here. Um, while she was hiding underneath the desk and I, I don't know, I, I don't see an issue with it. It's just kind of one of those, uh, kind of like, not brother and sister, like, fight, like, thing, but it was just kind of their dynamic, their relationship and things like that. And, um, I think also it's part of the character growth that kind of happens and, and things like that of, on the behalf of the, the male character, the, how he goes from the beginning to the end of the the book so I loved it um I am really disappointed that the way they did not um totally changed what happened and how they came together and they turned this into a enemies to lovers to a triangle relationship on the on the season so and they also what I did not like about the show was they kind of more or less on their on her connection with her sister and they totally changed that dynamic um, and totally which is not in the characters and their um what they would do so there there's such a sweet connection between Catherine and her sister uh, or Kate and I just I didn't like how they did those sisters dirty and they kind of um which is I'm going off on a tangent here but it's just my beef on like the whole sisterhood thing and not just the fact that they were you know being their stepsisters it's just the fact that it's just I just didn't like how they did it treating how women can be catty in that whole kind of relationship and totally not their dynamic at all and and the truth of their their loving and you know sisterly bond so so yeah so off my soapbox <laughs> Um, and then when he was wicked, oh my gosh, I think when I read that, I'm like, I read this, I'm like, wait, but this is now, this is, no, this is my favorite. And so it's really hard because I, like, each of these books is so good, um, so good. But, like, this one was, like, I think the steamiest out of all of them. Um, this is When He Was Wicked. This is the fourth or fifth, um, I can't remember which one it was and then you know sir philip i think is my favorite as well this, these two were like the, the steamiest i think out of all of these and they were really good um so this one follows eloise um and this one follows francesca francesca bridgerton so good this one is she's married um and the, so this is like a best friend or cousin cousin a best friend you know guy having husband's best friend um her husband passes away and he follows um, and so Michael has always pined for her, so, um, and he, and they fall in love, so it's very, very steamy, if you know, you know, in the one scene, so, so good. <laughs> um, and then Sir, and did honorable mention as well, is like, to Sir Philip, um, with love, so she is conversing, this is kind of like a, I want to say, 
male or bride almost <laughs> but they kind of like agree to be um they, they are writing back and forth to each other um for some reason or another i can't remember exactly why um i'm definitely probably will reread this before the the show will come out for that particular book um so i'm definitely going to be rereading colin and penelope's book before um the next season comes out um but this one so they converse and then she kind of like goes clandestine and kind of like runs away um to go off to be like um like a governess so to speak to his his kids and then them, them kind of like falling in love and such like that so um which i love so i love the governess trope so that's definitely um one of my favorites uh with that as well so i think this isn't necessarily Grumpy's sunshine, but he's uh, more reserved and he's like very sunshine and that kind of thing. He's not necessarily grumpy, but, but he's very intellectual, so to speak. So, so yeah. Um, cause he actually has like an intellectual job. So yeah. Next, I want to talk about, oh yes. So speaking of Julia Quinn, so there is another one um, that's a governess. So speaking of loving the governess kind of like trope, there is one called A Night Like This that I do not own, but I do remember loving this one. Um, I just, I just love it. It just reminds me of a little bit of like Jane Eyre, but not, <laughs> I don't know. If there's anything that is like Jane Eyre where there is a governess and you know, falls in love with the Lord and you know, uh, the kids and such are sweet and everything so I kind of just I love that trope so that is another one of my favorites of Julia Quinn's as well um and then the next one would be some so those are the books the specific books so the next few are just authors in general and trying to remember exactly which books I loved by them but it's been because it's been a while but anyway the next author is Julie Garwood, so she does a lot of um, Highlander romances and and such. And this one is a very popular one called The Bride. I do remember reading this, I just don't remember what happened. <laughs> I know it's been years. Um, so pretty much anything that Julie Garwood um, has written, I have loved if, I've read, if I had uh, read it before. It's just been so long I don't remember exactly. I can remember probably bits and pieces, but the stories kind of all blend together as, you know, a decade has passed. So I'm excited to get back to reading this, um, some more historical romances next year. So that's actually part of um, another video I will be showcasing soon, talking about um, historical, romance, historical romances specifically for my TBR goals. So, um, Make sure you like and subscribe so you can, or subscribe for those notifications so you can check that out um, when I do publish that. So just a shameless plug right there. <laughs> so Julie Garwood, love her. Um, I think she's just another one where I just loved her writing and her characters. And I just love, um, and it's also why I love Julia Quinn as well, is just the, the banter. I love the swoony with really great characters, with really great communication and banter. Um, I just love that. It just kind of, and also like it creates tension and there's like, and, and longing and pining and that kind of thing. So, and angst. So, I love it. And then next is, of course, no surprise, Johanna Lindsay. <laughs> she is actually, I think, I don't, I think it was this one or I think it might have been A Gentle Rogue. Um, I can't remember <laughs> which one I started with her, but I was first introduced to historical romance when I was about, I think, 12. Um, and it was with Johanna Lindsay, so if you know, you know. So Johanna Lindsay is, it's very, she's a very, oh gosh, what's it called? It's, um, it's, oh gosh, what's the term called? I will put it on the screen if I can remember. <laughs> I can't remember what it's called. But it's those kind of romances where it's very over the top and dramatic it just you know there's some consent non-consent kind of issues nowadays um but yeah it's just those very um gone with the wind kind of vibes um kind of books but i just love her um i even read like her like sci-fi version kind of thing where it's like a time travel -y one i can't remember which one that one exactly is but i actually enjoyed that one too um it's not as widely popular but it's um so yeah anything that julia actually anything that Johanna Lindsay has put in as well it's like one of my OG authors that I have loved and loved so so yeah this is Love Only Once this is the first one of the Mallory series and I definitely want to reread the Mallory series um for 2023 
Um, I did just order a Gentle Rogue <laughs> with the republished matte paperback one, so I'm really looking forward to reading that. Um, all of these, her series, I kind of have um, this awesome hardcover one that I found um, and discovered at a library book sale, and I just, I love the vintage covers and things like that. So I have all of those down here. Um, I don't know if you can see. So yeah, I have so much of it yet. So I love them all. So yes, um, I love those books. I do have a book haul where I talk about, um, where I um, showcase my my haul of these lovely books. So yes, I'm really excited to reread those. And yeah, I think The Gentle Rogue was one of my favorite because it is like a pirate one that I can recall. And the heroine kind of um disguises herself as a cabin boy to kind of go on there and fetch on on the ship so um so yeah love the Mallory series so I'm excited I do I'm just I'm just so excited to, to reread these and then last but not least is Christina Dodd so I have loved her books I think I, I know specifically I did read this one years ago um this one is in my wildest dreams um this one is, I think, childhood pining where she falls in love with him. I think there's like a 10 year difference. Um, and yeah, so they come, so yeah, when she's older and things like that. So I can't remember exactly what happens in here, but um, I think she also has a governess romance as well. So, uh, but yeah, I, she's also one of those that, I don't know, her writing is just so great. It's been years, but I just remember like, she has writes great swoony, stingy romances as well. Um, great, the characters' connections is very believable, I believe. So, so yeah, another one of my favorite um, authors before I joined book two, and so those are the ones I'm so most excited to join. So yeah, those those are what I recommend everyone reads that I loved. I've loved before book two. Um, so everyone, you might be familiar with those, or you might not, but, but yeah. So yes. Those are what I just am so excited to reread again. So I know I will definitely reread those books again and again. All right. So that is it. That is all she wrote. Um, so yeah, put in, uh, please like, subscribe, and comment down below any of those books that you've heard of. Um, if you have read True Love, let me know because I feel like I'm alone in this one. <laughs> I've never heard anyone talk about that book. So, um, but yeah, all right. Well, thank you for joining. Well, thank you for watching and I hope you have a good day. <laughs> Bye.